Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing y'all how to do an applique on the multi-needle. A lot of people have questions about this just because your machine doesn't usually stop unless your design is programmed to. So we're going to start at our hoop, so let's go. Alright, so we're at our hoop right now. I'm using a durky. It might look weird if you're not used to durkies, so what we're going to do, I know this is my top. I'm going to flip it over. It looks a little dirty, but I promise you it's still going to work good but you can wash them so right here i have filmoplast i love filmoplast because it has a grid on it which makes it e really easy to lay out so what i do i kind of roll it out i get it to the edge of my hoop and what i'll do i kind of crease it When I'm creasing it, it makes it easier to cut it. So it's, it might be hard to see on camera, but I have a crease right here and right here. And that's gonna make it 10 times easier to cut and to apply it. You can always use these extras, so I just leave them on there, kind of just maneuver my way through it. I just roll this back up. Now, a little trick, I know my line's not straight, it's okay. A little trick is when you're trying to peel this top grid piece away from the backing, instead of just sitting there picking at it, you might have to zoom in. If you rip a corner and then you see those little frays, you take your hand and then there you go. So I get it started. Then my hoop, I will take it. And then I will do this. Kind of line it up. Get it stuck down good on those corners. So once I do that, I kind of just take off this piece. Pull it very taut. and kind of just pull it so I know it's very taut and straight and not puckering and loose anywhere. Now if you have extra that's hanging over just like this, just take some scissors, and cut it away. If you don't want to fold it down, um, makes it stick in a little bit harder. So once I do that, then I flip it over and you see it's sticky. Now it doesn't look very sticky, but I promise you it is. So I'm just gonna take my regular white linen. Just, just like that. And then now our hoop is ready to go. We're gonna head to our machine. What you could do if you wanted a little bit more extra stabilizer, you could flip it to the back. You could get some cutaway and spray some um, KK100 on the back of that cutaway and then stick it to here so you'd have just a little bit more stabilization. Now let's head to our machine. All right, so we're at my screen. I'm going to actually, I have a flash drive in here. I'm going to pull it up. So I'm going to hit this little icon right here. And I already have some saved to it, but I'm going to pull up this little fish applique. I'm going to hit set. I want to size it just a little bit. So you see how there's two tabs right here. There's this one. And then there's this one. I always like to use the second one right here. It automatically fixes the density for you when you size it up. Or size it down. I think that's good. So I'm going to rotate it to be like that. And now I am ready to start sewing. But first, I got to put my hoop on. So I just take my little sides. Usually I flip the back up. Just so when I'm putting it on my machine. 
it's easy to just flip it up like that. Now back at my machine, sized and rotated. So I'm gonna go edit and I just wanna see where it all's going to stitch. So there's two options to get, do here. You can hit this little rectangle. The needle will drop on which position it's on and it will automatically do like a little circle. The option I like, just because I'm a visual person, is this little two needles. You click it. So this side won't do anything. It won't move the machine at all. But this side, so I know I'm on number one. So I can click my top and it's gonna move it to the top of my design. So I know it's gonna be right there. And the bottom of my design is gonna be right there. I can check my corners. I think I'm good. So I'm just gonna press okay. And then um, I'm going to use manual color sequence. You'll know it's on when it has this little icon in the top left. So it's right here. You just click it, and this is where you're going to set all your colors. What I love about manual color sequence is because if you go back a screen, all your colors don't reset to default. So this is our tack down. So we can do pretty much any color. Um, number six. That might be hard to see. Number five. And how I know what it's going to stitch is you see this little box right here? It gives a, a little preview of what that design stitches. So that's my placement. This is my tack down. This is another placement stitch. This is another tack down. I don't know if I wanna do them in white just because it'll be a little bit harder to see. Let's do nine. This one again is applique, so. Then these are my fishing um, hooks. So an applique, what's the number one thing you gotta remember? Your machine has to stop. So on a 10 needle, your machine doesn't know, hey, let's stop after this color. Um, just because it's a workhorse, it likes to go through every color. Um, some designs are programmed to stop, some are not. I just like to make sure and be safe. So what I'm gonna do, I know after this placement or tack down stitch, placement one, I need it needs to stop after that. So if I hit this little hand, it's gonna stop after it stitches that. So I know I'm gonna need it there, 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 there and there. Now I don't need it after this because that's just embroidery and then this part just gets into the eyes and then the satin stitches. I still need to program those colors though. So I'm gonna do five. I don't have gray up there right now, but that's okay. Um, this is just an eyeball. He'll have brown eyes. I'll do four. Now this is the satin stitch. I'm just gonna make my fish blue. So I know my, show them up here. My blue is on five, if y'all didn't know what I was doing. So I'm just gonna come over here, I'm gonna tell the machine five. This one's supposed to be red. I know 10's at red, so I'm just going to be pressing 10. Now the last color is blue. I'm just gonna do that dark color blue again. I'm gonna do five. I hope that's four. Now, say I don't want it to stitch the eye for some reason. You can hit this no sew, and when you hit that, it actually disappears from your design. So you know it's not supposed to sew that. We need the eye, so we're pretty good. We set our colors, put our stops, and we're ready to go to the next screen. So let's press okay. And embroidery, oh, wrong thing, embroidery. 
Now I'm ready to press lock and start. So it just got done with that first placement stitch. You can see it's it stopped like it was supposed to, and now we're ready for the place down our fabric. I'm just using this boutique fabric. It's really cute as the fish. I kind of try to get the most out of my scrap fabric. So I kind of find a corner that'll work and then do it that way. So once I got that, I'm ready to just press lock and start. You can show that. Now, once it stops, you have two options. So everybody knows after this um, tack down stitch, you have to cut your fabric, or the scraps around it off. So you could either take it out of the hoop or you can come here to press this. See those two needles and it looks like a hoop right there. Press that button. And then this hoop, it actually kicks out your hoop so you can sit here if you don't have double curve scissors you I highly recommend these these are perfect for appliques then you can just sit there and cut around your applique fingers might be in the way a little bit of the video. You kind of saw me struggling when I got over there because I didn't have much arm room, but you can always, this is a little bit trickier. You got to make sure nothing happens while it's out of its stand and then you can get closer. I usually take it out of the hoop, but it's all personal preference. I just feel like I can get closer to that embroidery when I have it out of my, off my machine. All right, so now I'm just gonna put it back in my A arm. And then I'm just gonna press okay and it's gonna kick my embroidery back in. Now I'm ready for the next, so lock start. Gonna take my fabric place it there and lock start. I want your fingers. I don't recommend sticking them in there. Like I said, I like taking my hoop out. It's all personal preference though. If you want to keep it in there, that is perfectly fine. Might be hard to see. Look how close these scissors get without cutting my embroidery or my stitches. Now just stick it back in there. I flip the back up excess and then slide it back on flip that up now I'm ready for the next one
Now, I really don't think that's going to fit in that little square. But I'm going to try it. I don't recommend doing that. I'm not putting any pressure on my hoop. I'm barely even touching the fabric. Hmm, did pretty good. Okay, that's where it messed up. I forgot to do my little hand. Good thing we were watching it though. Y'all, it's okay to make mistakes. Honestly, I've made a ton in my lifetime doing embroidery. That is how you learn. Um, I hate to say it. Some people don't like that, but really trial and error is how you learn. You fix yourself. Um, all these educators and stuff, they didn't just wake up one morning knowing something. They had to do it, see what worked best, kind of maybe manipulate it in their own style, trial and error. And if you mess up, it's not the end of the world. There we go. All right, now we're ready to just do the embroidery. So walk and start. All right, so it's finished. What's awesome about this machine and the new features, we're using the Brother PR1055X, if you haven't um, noticed or we didn't tell you. It flashes whenever it's done. If you have a thread break and something breaks, it'll also flash and it'll actually pop up on here and tell you which one's broken. Um, but yeah, let me kick it out real quick. Look how gorgeous that applique is. Your fabric isn't coming up. I know I said I was going to do the eye in brown, but it turns out I did white because I figured the brown wouldn't show up. But anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching. It would be so cute if you added a name up here, like arrayed it somehow. Um, thank you for watching. Give it a like and a subscribe and see you in the next one.